Hey dudes, do the builder here. And in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be taking a look at how to format your data structures, your structs. And this may seem like a trivial topic, only concerning when you need to produce some type of uh, printed output. But in, in actuality, the, the way that uh, formatting and, and formatted printing works in Zig, you're dealing with uh, writers and you can basically uh, control how your struct is going to be uh, transformed when printed out using any type of writer. So you could basically use this mechanism um, as a serialization mechanism or um, as a way to produce output for different uh, destinations such as network sockets and things like that. And precisely the example that we're going to be working on is an example of the HTTP request, um, a request data structure. And with the uh, formatted printing mechanism in Zig, you can control how that request is going to be produced uh, to be ready to be sent over the network. Um, so let's start off. We have here an enum which is for the request method. And to keep things simple, we're not covering all the methods, we're just covering get, post, and put. And here is basically the example of the function or the method that you have to implement in a struct. So this uh, automatic formatting uh, mechanism can kick in in Zig. The signature of this function is found in the Zig documentation for the font um, namespace. I, I'll put a link in the description. But basically, uh, if you implement this uh, uh, function, which becomes a method because it's inside a struct and it's taking as its first parameter an instance of that uh, data type, the struct itself, in this case, the method enum. And you're going to have these uh, parameters. Uh, this one is uh, the the format that's passed in by the the zig formatting infrastructure and as you can see here we are using the underscore to ignore this parameter and we're also using an uh, underscore here to ignore this options the format options parameter because in the vast majority of cases you're not going to be using these you're only going to be using your uh, actual data structure instance and the writer which is uh, where you're going to be writing out uh, your formatted data structure. And in the case of this enum, all we want to do is we're going to be switching on self, which is the enum itself. And for each of the different uh, variants of the enum, the, the different methods in this case, we're basically just uh, writing out using the write all method of the writer this uh, literal uh, string for each one, which is how traditionally in the HTTP uh, spec you find the different methods are all uppercase. So for each one of these enum uh, variants, we have the uppercase string version, get, post, and put. Now we're going to see we have another enum here that represents the, the content encoding. And once again, we're not covering all of the possible encodings. We just have here uh, three, which are popular these days. We have the Bratley uh, encoding, which uh, represents the Bratley compression, deflate compression, and gzip compression. Okay. And once again, we define here our uh, format method. And since it's an enum, once again, we're switching here. And uh, for the, the case of Bratley, um, the the encoding is represented as as the string br, so we need to uh, single out this case. But in the case of the other two, deflate and gzip, we can use an inline else and the handy uh, tag name built-in, which will uh, return the string version of the enum variant tag. Okay. And that's just what we need with the deflate and gzip uh, variants. Moving on, we have a version enum here. And here we're using the at uh, quoted syntax because the versions 
have characters, in this case uh, the dot, that wouldn't be allowed in normal identifiers. And this is an example of how you can use the at, co uh, at quote syntax to define identifiers of any type. Okay. So here we have the different uh, HTTP versions, uh, 1.0, 1.1, 2, and 3. Basically, um, how this how, how they've been defined in the different specs. And once again, looking at the the format uh, method here, we are using uh, the inline else. In this case, we don't have to single out any one of them. We can use uh, the same treatment for all of them. We are basically adding on this HTTP slash prefix. And then we use the tag name built in to obtain that ver uh, string version of the tag. Next up, we have the actual request struct itself. And here, as you can see, uh, we're going to be defining uh, default, default values for each of the fields. We have this accept field here, which is going to be a slice of constant coding. That's that enum that we, we saw uh, previously. And in, in the case of the default request, we're going to be uh, having all three of our encodings, a deflate, gzip, and uh, broadly. And here, the body of our request is going to be a slice of bytes, a slice of const u8. We're defining the default body to be hello world. Um, here the default method is going to be get. The path is going to be uh, another string, a slice of const u8. And the default is slash. And the default version is going to be 1.1, which is of type version, the version enum. Now, for the, the format method here for our request struct, we will be making use of the format, default formatting that we already implemented for the, those other uh, data structures and enums. Uh, first off, we're going to be starting out our request, and this is basically following the HTTP specification where you have um, the very first a request line, as it's known, um, it's it's going to have first the the method that we're going to be using. Then we have the path, which is going to be a string, and that's where we're using here the, the S format specifier. And uh, then we have the version. And as you can see, for the method and the version, we're not uh, explicitly um, including here any format specifier because this is how you uh, basically tell Zig that you're going to be using that default formatting, using that uh, format method of each of those uh, the types involved. You just leave the curly braces empty. Then on the next line, we have here uh, accepting coding with a space, and then we stop right there because we're going to be iterating over the encoding values in the slice of that field. So up to here, all we need are these three um, these three um, placeholders, uh, placeholders are going to be filled in and that's what we're going to be doing here with the writer, the print method. We pass in this format stir1 and we're going to be indeed uh, using the method, the path, and the version. Okay. Next up, as I said, we're going to be iterating over the encodings that accept field because we want to create a comma separated list as, as the specification uh, requires if it's more than one. So um, here, if the index here is uh, not zero, then we're going to add the comma and the space. And then we print out once again using the print with the empty curly braces to use that default formatting each of the encodings. And finally, we have this multi-line uh, format string here. We have the required two new lines before the body, which is going to be a string. And then we, once again, use the print method with the, our new format string. And this time, the only placeholder that we have to fill in is with the, the body itself of the request. Finally, here in main, we're going to put this to the test. Uh, we create a request here. Uh, using the empty curly braces, we're going to be making use of all those default values that we defined. 
And then using here the empty curly braces as the format specifier for print, in this case the debug print, we're going to be printing out our request data structure. So basically this is how you're going to be making use of this functionality that we just demonstrated. When you define a data structure, a struct, and inside you have that method with the required signature, the format method, um, you can then uh, do this, take advantage of printing anywhere you have a writer that you can print out to, and you can use the empty curly braces format specifier with your data structure, and it will be formatted as uh, you define in that format method. Here we are indeed printing out our requests with all of the default values. And here we're changing up the values. We're setting the method to put. Uh, the path is going to be about.html. We're only going to be accepting the gzip encoding. And the body is now just by. Okay. And then we print that one more time. And that's basically it. Let's move on to our terminal. And let's do our zig build run. And there you go. As you can see, our first request. It, it's formatted here. We got the, the method, the path, the version. Uh, the, for the accept encoding, we have our comma separated list here. Our two new lines, uh, which create this uh, empty line here. And then we have our body of hello world. Our second uh, modified request is put about the HTML, HTTP 1.1. It's only, this time it's only gzip. It's, it's, it doesn't have to be the comma separated list. It's only one item. And the empty line and our body of by. So as you can see, uh, with this uh, formatting mechanism, it's, not sim it's simply not just for uh, printing out to the screen. You could, uh, in the case, for example, this request, if you have a network socket, which is uh, a writer in Zig also, you could then uh, use that writer's print uh, method to print out your request as per the HTTP specification. Um, and you can control that with the formatted printing functionality that we have seen here in Zig. So I hope you can make the most of this. Uh, do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.